That's your intro dance? Yeah, that's my intro <laughs> dance. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Whining with Witches. I am Brittany, and I have with me again... Lauren. Yeah. <laughs> so today's topic is going to be a little controversial. It's about the uh, racism and otherism in witchcraft. So today's topics, we're going to be talking about how I guess I see my practice as a POC in a very still white space in dealing with witchcraft. And then Lauren's perspective also um, because of her travels overseas. And I think it, inc it incorporates a really good non-American perspective, even though we are both Americans. So that is the caveat. So um, the what I want to start off with is like my huge pet peeve. I've mentioned it in a previous podcast, but the term black magic, I hate it. I hate it so much. So black magic is really just a racially charged term to diminish a lot of POC based, especially African based religions or practices. Um, that's why a lot of times we see hoodoo being represented as like the evil Thing in shows and movies and stuff and it's always like black magic and um, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean yeah. princess and the frog comes to mind immediately yeah. yeah yeah but it's also something I feel like I didn't I I obviously recognized before I got into witchcraft but it wasn't until I got into witchcraft where I realized like wow there is a lot of indoctrination happening because I kind of thought that like I thought a lot yeah. of that was was maybe not evil necessarily but maybe a little more baneful yeah so uh yeah I just kind of want to get your perspective and then I'll kind of talk a little bit more from my angle of it um so I grew up in the Houston area um and a lot of people don't know this but I think a lot of like New Orleans culture um bleeds into Houston um so like it's very standard in Houston to like take a weekend trip to New Orleans um, they're kind of close and people in Houston are used to driving long distances. <laughs> well, that, and after Hurricane Katrina, you had a lot yeah. of, yeah. um, New Orleans, like transplants. Yeah. Um, so I do remember like growing up and obviously like this very established idea of like mysticism and voodoo and hoodoo within New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was always kind of like this weird thing you go and see and like, but don't, uh, and my cat's going to interrupt us. Um, <laughs> hi, Nolene. Um, this thing that you just kind of go do. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your perspective on this conversation. Um, very well-placed perspective. <laughs> yeah. But it was very much like an othering kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. And this kind of like line of, it could be real, so don't be mean. Um, but then also it's kind of a gimmick and just go and like admire what, um, and going to use kind of like the phrasing as a white person and how it would be interpreted, like this black magic mm -hmm. kind of, you know, experience. Um, so yeah. Yeah. The, the idea that especially, I, so I've been to New Orleans twice, once as a kid, once as an adult, as a kid, we kind of did all this stuff that the adults let us do so a lot of it was like the architecture the food you know going to like flea markets but they didn't really take us to I mean they're not going to take us to any voodoo shops or anything yeah. like that so and then when I was an adult it was a very short trip um we basically were there for a tournament all day so we had time for drinks and eating shops yeah. were closed by the time we were done so I never really got to experience that but um, I do know <laughs> one of the big attractions out there is them sort of taking this negative aspect of how people can, you know, consider voodoo, whatever, and they sort of marketed it towards yeah. tourists and stuff. And I think that's a really cool, I should say interesting way to combat that. Yeah. So they just kind of like play into it and make their money. And I, can't be mad at it yeah I can't be mad I I would pay like if yeah. I went to New Orleans I would be like absolutely take my money like exactly yeah I I would too I mean it would be cool to have a cool little thing from a voodoo shop but then it would be awesome and be like okay so where's the good stuff like where yeah, yeah. are the actual like mystical shops and yeah 
to see the two dynamics. So now that I'm kind of into that, I would love to do a trip to New Orleans just for that purpose. Yeah. I still have never been to New Orleans. Really? Um, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So we have to add that to the list of places. Yeah, I'm an awful Texan um, or Houstonian. So yeah, I've never been. Wow. Yeah. It's really lovely. I mean, the food, the art, the architecture, the everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It definitely no, it's, is its own thing. Yeah, it's a fascinating city from a historical perspective, too, which, you know, I love history. So I know. You know. And you love all that spooky yuki shit. So you yeah. would love doing, like, the ghost tours yes. and, you know, the fun fact, like, this is where all specific people died tours. Yeah. You would, you would <laughs> we would have to drag you kicking and screaming from yeah. this. Place. Yeah, no, I would love that. <laughs> but uh, so along with like racism, I feel like there's also what I call otherism, where it's not necessarily just like, not necessarily based on race or anything like that. I see it a lot in, um, I think the biggest one I notice is like men versus women in witchcraft. Yeah. So like a lot of times, there are books that are obviously very feminine based which is yeah. why a lot of women get into witchcraft it's very empowering but then it kind of pushes <laughs> the pendulum too far and it becomes more of a like well witchcraft is only for women type yeah. thing so that compounded with the um and this is going to be very fun transition for you so this compounded with the idea of like black magic and the racism forms a very <laughs> white women space and yeah. it's very reminiscent of like the white feminism versus just yeah. feminism stuff yeah. so I'd love to hear your opinion on that um so yeah and I do think the witchcraft community is going through a transition um which is a great thing um and obviously that's from a perspective of like where I live and like the local witchcraft communities do try mm -hmm. um really consistently to be welcoming and diverse and um, the business owners recognize that they are white women and are very like upfront about making spaces for other people's thoughts and opinions. Mm -hmm. um, so I do think it's slowly changing, which um, is long overdue, but it was very, um, reminds me a lot of second wave feminism in the beginning, um, which is kind of when we started to see that divide be really apparent um but yeah i think it's an interesting development and then really what comes to mind is like the consumer consumption of witchcraft mm -hmm. being sold towards white women yeah. so uh, the very controversial you know sephora <laughs> <laughs> selling uh sage and crystal kits well obviously sephora has a very specific demographic that right. they are marketing to um we're gonna get so many like cease and desist letters <laughs> from all these businesses <laughs> i've dropped today Sephora's um, gonna be like uh never mention our names again you're yeah. no longer welcome in this store <laughs> yeah um but yeah and i do think I think finally people are starting to recognize that. And I hope that people continue to make spaces for other people's voices um, in person. The online community, I think, will just always be a hot mess because it's online <laughs> communities. Um, and I don't participate in those spaces like you do. Yeah. Um, and we'll always stay away from them. <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, I have both an in-person and an online like community that I majorly, majorly hang out with. Yeah. I, this isn't even wine. I just can't even talk today. Yeah, um, yeah. But, yeah we're both drinking water today. <laughs> <laughs> which is why I did not ask what Lauren yeah. was drinking. Um, but uh, there is a very clear divide, but I think that's like the nature of the beast with the internet is that you'll always have these like keyboard warriors that feel empowered to say whatever they want. Um, I do remember, <clears throat> I guess it was fairly recently, within the last year, there's like this huge push to better respect like native practices, yeah, yeah. Um, especially with the whole issue with like, can you use white sage versus not using white sage? And the the response I always see is like, well, everything's from the earth, so we can use it. I'm like, yeah, kind of, <laughs> but should you is the should question. You? Should you? Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, 
tobacco is from the earth, but I still don't smoke cigarettes because yeah. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> but like, so that, that there's still like this level of disrespect, I feel like, or, yeah. or entitlement from a large portion. I shouldn't say a large portion, but a good portion of, at least online, good portion of the witching community that just feels like, you know, they're entitled to whatever it is they want to use. And I think a lot of that has come from the consumerism because yeah. especially with witchcraft becoming more popular, stores picking things up, they just pick up whatever is popular and yeah. push it to people. And people that are coming in new just decide, well, if they're selling it, it must be okay. And then, it's of course, they never like to be told they're wrong. Yeah. So it creates a lot of, like, disrespect and... <laughs> And, cool, <laughs> I know. I think I think Apollo finally. Yeah. Both newly and clips have made appearances now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it creates like this level of in- entitlement that ends up being very disrespectful for yeah. you know practices that ha- for a long time had to be pushed under the table. Um, we all know our country's history with, you know, the relationship between Native Americans and the white settlers and all of yeah. that <clears throat> and then the same for hoodoo so hoodoo is very interesting I don't know how much you know about it I don't consider myself like a practitioner but I've been trying yeah. to learn about it hoodoo is technically not a closed practice but yeah. in the um I will say African-American uh spiritual community it's a hot button topic whether white people should be allowed to do hoodoo or not some people are like, it doesn't matter at all. Some people are like, well, maybe they should get a hoodoo practitioner to do a reading for them and decide whether it's good or bad. Yeah. And then others are like, no, it should just be closed. You should not do it. And a lot of that stems from, you know, the whole reason hoodoo was created, basically by the slaves, because they were forced to give up their African religions. And it was yeah. their way of incorporating a little bit of that and a little bit of the Christianity that was thrown at them. So <laughs> I, I guess, do you, uh, have you seen any, any of that? I know you're not on online community. So I was just curious. Um, so in the very beginning, when I was in online communities, I did see a little bit of it. And then specifically, I know it was probably when it was first like becoming a hot topic kind of issue. Mm-hmm. And I very much interpret it as, and and I think I view a lot of like magic research this way, um, especially when you're incorporating practices that are based on like ancestors. Mm-hmm. Um, that's something that needs to be considered. Um, ancestrally, I don't, I, we could go back probably a very long time and there is no overlap. Um, and so it's just not something that I've ever researched because it's not something that I myself would feel comfortable practicing yeah um and so yeah I I never really went past like okay this is not a space that was made for me Mm -hmm. um and so I respect people within that space but it's not something that I myself would ever do right and that and that makes sense I think there's there's a lot of practices in hoodoo that I think are really common yeah, both within hoodoo and just kind of across hoodoo kind of falls into just like the folk practices it's just like one of the many different folk practices that exist and um when you have folk practices certain similarities just yeah happen across across them and one of the big ones is um ancestral work yeah. and that's just that that's i feel like very common in general yeah um and uh a lot of times people people fall into one of two camps. They either are so nervous about being disrespectful, they don't do anything. And then yeah. there are the other people that are like, well, I can do whatever I want. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's very interesting because a lot of times people will be like, well, is ancestral work a uh, close practice? And I'm like, everybody has ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to tell you, you cannot celebrate your your own family that yeah. makes no sense now how you do it might differ from practice to practice yeah. and maybe you know you shouldn't 
take from a specific like religion or ritual or something like yeah. that but in general <laughs> it's, it's really funny to find the people who are on the opposite end of the spectrum that just are so worried about like just they're like, if I if I make one misstep, the entire internet will cancel. Me. <laughs> they're not wrong, you know. But they're yeah. not. They're yeah. not. And especially, you know, I don't want to speak for any other minority group, but you know, I feel I've noticed that um, within the Native Americans and the Black practices, they're fiercely protective of yeah. it, which is while Native American practices are closed, uh, at least the ones that I'm familiar with, uh, the hoodoo is not. Now, yeah. voodoo, that's a whole different story, yeah. but hoodoo is not. So it creates this huge rift between, um, even within the community, there are like the Black people that are like, whatever, you know, it's not, it's not closed. Yeah. <laughs> people can practice. And then there are the others like, why why would you as a non-black person want to practice something created by slaves yeah so it it creates this um very interesting dynamic of 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 trying it's hard to navigate and yeah i mean i guess you know you kind of have your own moral compass when it comes to that and like you're saying you just feel like you don't belong in that space so yeah i I know I guess I should give my opinion on it. I kind of feel the same way. I'm like, I yeah. kind of side-eye people <laughs> that are not my color practicing hoodoo. And I actually ran across somebody like this the other day. And I, I, I was, we were just talking about hoodoo. Someone had asked and I was like, well, I, I side-eye white people that practice yeah. hoodoo. I, I generally just don't understand why they would want to participate in a practice that was created because of them <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah and um and she got so offended she was like this is why I don't tell people about my practice and I was like okay don't tell people about your practice like uh, but uh, if you can't say it if you like so that statement alone like oh this is why I don't tell people then maybe you should address why they're telling you that like but you know just, yeah you know, just a thought and I get it, you know, it depends how you grow up. A lot of people grow up, like, you know, if you were a, a white person adopted into a black family, yeah. that's a part of your culture now. So yeah. I get it. And I'm I'm consciously aware that these things, these exceptions yeah. exist, but as yeah. a whole, they you don't. end up being so protective over the small things that you have a grasp on that it's yeah. hard to want to let outsiders into that. So yeah, that I just I I think that's very interesting. Yeah. So talking about navigating this one will be fun. Talking about navigating the um, world of white people as a black person. <laughs> one another thing that I side eye often, and I try not to do do this because I'm sure it's just a loud minority, but yeah. is the uh, Norse pagans because of the common association with white supremacy, yeah. neo-Nazis, all of that. So since you have more of a background with like Germany and your yeah. experience with, you know, European mysticism and all of that, uh, tell me your opinion about that. Okay, so I will preface by saying um, after talking to you, uh, specifically bringing like ancestral work to like my mind, um, I don't do ancestral work, but mm -hmm. um, from my ancestry, it does very just prevalent Germanic roots. Um, so I am interested in um, like Eastern European folklore, folk magic. Um, the diversity in that region, I think is just utterly fascinating. Um, and probably to some people's surprise, white supremacy is very much alive and well, um, along Our with- Surprise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> along with neo-nazism um, fascism the whole bucket exists mm -hmm. um, especially on online spaces it can get very tricky very quickly 
Mm -hmm. um, because that community also has an overlap with like goth and punk communities. Mm -hmm. And then also with pagan communities, witchcraft communities. And these people are very good at finding themselves very quickly, yeah. um, which is really disturbing when you think about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I know within those communities, they're consistently coming up with iconography that kind of flies under the radar. Um, so there was a big controversy a while ago of them taking runes and editing runes to like be a symbol. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just really upsetting. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I know there is a group um, heavily pushing back on this. There are a lot of people in online spaces dedicated to outing these people. Yeah. Um, and I think it's fantastic. And I know specifically within like the witch TikTok spaces. Um, and I was actually surprised that this mostly came from men, but mm -hmm. a lot of white men who are practicing Norse paganism are very aggressive, specifically on TikTok of like, mm -hmm outing people, reclaiming the space, being like, no, like this isn't acceptable. It's not allowed. Um, and we're not going to tolerate it, um, which is great. And I desperately yeah. think we need more people like that. <laughs> uh -huh. And I think it, it's interesting you brought that up because I think a lot of white men tend to end up in Norse pagan yeah. practices because that's where they see themselves. It's, yeah. it's not to get away from women or get away from yeah, black yeah. people. So when they end up seeing themselves, they see other similarly minded men and they're like, okay, yeah. I, you know, you kind of have a little solidarity only yeah. to find out that there's like undercover, like racism or, yeah. you know, misogyny or something. It yeah. can be very disappointing. And just like you said, I saw a lot of, that's kind of how it was brought to my attention. Yeah. Um, the, the, brought to my attention in the sense that the issue was bigger than I realized. Yes. Um, was on TikTok. A lot of guys that I follow will talk about how they're, they're working really hard to reclaim Norse yeah. paganism and like sort of break it from that stigma. It, I mean, it's still very prevalent. It's hard to get rid of. Cause like you said, they, they kind of just create their own little code and then it's, it's hard to keep up with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I, Oh, go ahead. Oh, so I was going to say, and they are like, so like as a white person, obviously I know like white supremacy exists, mm -hmm. but you don't really realize how prevalent it is until you move into those spaces. And then it's yeah. like, oh my gosh, this is terrifying. Yeah. Um, and then they're just so good at it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and recently a like organization that's very much dedicated to world peace. I'm not going to name drop this time, um, <laughs> you know, shared pictures of female Ukrainian troops on International Women's Day. And one of them is wearing a neo-Nazi symbol um, that just straight up looks like pagan iconography. Yeah. Um, I didn't even know what it was. And How so, did you find out? Uh, people were calling them out. Oh. And so, like, um, pe the people who were dedicated to fighting, like, this kind of um, subverted language and iconography came forward mm -hmm. and was like, yo. <laughs> wow. Uh, Neo-Nazi symbol, not okay. That's not a pagan yeah. symbol. Um, and so, yeah, it's mind-blowing that that's what it takes. It takes yeah. these group of very dedicated individuals. I you know, it's very <laughs> interesting that even in the, and, you know, I'm not trying to paint all white people as being like racist or horrible or anything like that. So yeah. anybody listening or watching, like, that's not what I'm doing. You can whine about it in the email if you want, but I won't listen. So yeah. I'll delete <laughs> um, it for I think you. it's very interesting that the black or evil magic is associated yeah. with like the black or brown practices, but then you have these undercover racists and these actual, like actual undercover racists in these practices and they don't like, they don't get labeled anything. Yeah. It's just crazy. Yeah. I think they're really good at stating or like giving the presentation that they're not in existence and that they're not mm. active and that they're not collecting, right. um, which is just very much against the truth. So, right. And I, I think, you know, people really want to believe like racism isn't a thing anymore yeah. or like 
you know, misogyny isn't real or something like that. So since it's not so front and center, it's very easy for them to just put their blinders on and and look away, Um, which is frustrating. But I I have to imagine too, you know, I guess this is the one occasion where white men have it hard too. (laughs) They do. I feel sorry for them. I should edit that Especially out. Especially in worse paganism. I'm like, you're doing your yeah. best. You're it, doing and it's really, it, you know, I, I've never personally, I don't have any Norse or like Celtic roots as far as yeah. I'm aware. Nothing, nothing prevalent enough for me to want to really dive any deeper than just a little bit of the folklore because it's interesting. Like just the yeah. stories are interesting. So I'm, I'm similar to you in hoodoo. Like I, I have an awareness of it. Yeah. I, I'm, I know what's going on in the community, but I don't really deeply involve myself because it's not it's not something I feel connected to in any kind of way yeah <laughs> so um yeah I guess that, uh, that's really uh that that's a lot of heavy topics so yeah. uh <laughs> I don't Sorry. think I really have anything else uh, uh other yeah than those three main things did you was there anything else you wanted to follow up on No, I think that's it. Other than I would like to encourage people to be better in their lives. Um, And if you have the opportunity to be an ally and help make space to uplift other person's voices, that would be my request. Oh, I love that. I can't say it any better. So I guess we can just end it right there. So listeners or viewers, thank you so much for listening to this episode about black magic and um, yeah, catch us next time for more cats. cats. (laughs) Next time, catch us in our next episode. We're going to be talking about karma and free will and all of that fun stuff. And if you want, make sure to follow us on YouTube. Otherwise, you can email us if you have any questions. If you have concerns, keep them to yourself. (laughs) I'm kidding. But yeah, thank you guys for watching or listening to Whining with the Witches. Bye. Bye.